this match day 31 picks edition of the Premier League Gambling Podcast on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network is brought to you by Cut. Cut is a peer-to-peer social betting platform that's US-based and available in 40 states. Head to cut.com, that's K-U-T-T.com. Use promo code SGPN for a 10% deposit bonus. We're also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Play their fantasy pick for a chance to win 100x in NBA, MLB, NHL, college basketball and more. Sign up today using the promo code PLGP to get a 100% deposit match. And we're brought to you by Hall of Fame Bets, the sports betting research platform for parlays, player props and game lines. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit hofbets.com. Use code SGPN to get 50% off your first month and start making smarter bets today. Welcome, everybody, to the Premier League Gambling Podcast on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network. My name is Malcolm Bamford, coming from Newcastle upon Tyne in the northeast of England. Uh, today is, should know this, it's Jesus Day, isn't it? Sunday, the 31st of March. And we are here to talk about the frankly daft weekend of Premier League football that finished a couple of hours ago. Um, but luckily, we've only got about 24 hours to wait until there's another full set of fixtures joining us. I can already tell he's wildly hungover. Um, I got my own back now after he took the piss out of me a couple of weeks ago, Mr. Barry Penaluna. Hello, Baz. How are you? Um, I'm not going to say I'm all right, I'm, I'm struggling. Uh, but notably, Markham, when I've got a hangover, I'm still here 10 o'clock Sunday night on time. Yeah, all right. Uh, whereas I'll you print the dilly off. 24 hours, so I didn't cry off like you did. Um, but yeah, I'm struggling. True. Went, um, went to my brothers last night, five of us, uh, very sophisticated. We had a wine and cheese night. Um, 16 bottles of wine were consumed. How many? 16 between five, of wine. between wow. five, yeah. So lots of wine. Uh, finished up at about three o'clock in the morning. Um, Callum has already alluded in the chat a little bit of fisty cuffs at one point. I was live on TikTok drunk at about two o'clock in the morning, and it was all kicking off through in the kitchen. Um, I was, we were scuffling in the kitchen. <laughs> it doesn't need to, doesn't need to be stewed over now. It's all uh, water under the bridge, Malcolm. Um, I'll tell you offline. But um, so yeah, that was that was fun. Um, I did. I don't know what I was thinking going on TikTok live at two o'clock in the no. morning, absolutely steaming drunk. Um, Carl and Jamie are sleeping the sofa opposite me. Uh, Carl asleep with two glasses of wine in his hand. Um, oh. Good effort. Uh, but yeah, good, good night was hard. Uh, but I, yeah, I've been struggling today. I've just been in and out of bed all day, watched the football, and then just moved back and forwards from the bedroom to the sofa. But, uh, all By good. a process of elimination, I can work out at least half of the scufflers. Because <laughs> I know there's only five of you there, but I can't work out to the other half of the... Uh, the other half of the fracas was, Baz. So you can tell us about that later on. Well, it's exciting that I uh, I went to the pub myself last night, so I've been a little bit tired and emotional the day, but not so bad as that I had to delay the show 24 hours, not as bad as last time. Um, I just went up Gossy High Street with the footy dads, uh, it was all right. Where'd we go? Gossy Hotel, Queen Vic, went in the blacksmith's arms. It's rough in there, Baz. Jesus, uh, really rough. And then we went across to Bar Luga and had a cocktail, fancy pants, and then walked home. So I was home uh, for about midnight. Then watched match of the day, watched the Newcastle bit of match of the day about nine times. Um, well, did pickled onions. So that went quite well. Um, the other thing I did, I went to Gateshead on Friday because uh, I just woke up and I knew there was like loads of racing on. There was a championship. I thought, if I sit here, if I start, like gambling at lunchtime. It's gonna be a long weekend. Like it's a long, it's a long bank. It's a four day, isn't it? It's not even just a standard three day bank holiday. I thought if I start gambling at lunchtime on a Friday, I'm gonna be a shell of a man by sort of Saturday tea time. So me and walk, I went to watch Gateshead v Rochdale. Um Gateshead won one nil. My man scored to Sean Brown, the guy I tipped up in the week. Um but there was a couple of things that I thought it was worth discussing, Baz. One was Rochdale were 
absolute shit. Terrible. Awful. And But just, like, as I run, well, I've been involved in uh, sort of the young lads football teams and that, and we said last week that Leon had gone to Sunderland, Lucas had gone to Newcastle 12s, Bob plays for the district. Good players. They're very, very good players. And I was just looking at these Rochdale professional footballers, people making a living, but they just weren't very good. Bass, but, like, they were all big and fit and strong. Do you know what I mean? They were all the same size and shape. The centre forward was a right lump, like six foot two. I never seen him run. He never ran down the channel. He never got a little eyebrows flick on. He never got a hot shot off. He didn't join in. He did fuck all. Like, and I just don't know how people, like, how much is luck and how much is fitness and how much is just turning up. Because he looked like he's just turned up a lot, I reckon. Like, that's what he's done. He's fair play to the lad. He's stuck at it. He's getting paid to play football. Like, he's a professional footballer. But my goodness, Barry, they were terrible. So I was thinking about that. And then the other thing I was thinking about is all the daft lads at Gateshead. So there's a section at the back of the stand. It's a horrible ground. It's the Athletics Stadium. So it's rubbish for watching football. But there must be about two or 300 daft lads at the back with a drum singing all the daft songs. Um... And that's quite a new thing. It's quite a popular thing, I think, amongst the daft kids around the country. Is maybe if you can't get in, like if they can't get into Newcastle, or they can't afford to get into Newcastle, or they don't want to go and watch Newcastle. But you'll see quite a lot of videos of stuff of lower league and non-league groups of daft kids going mental. And I'm all for it, Baz. It was absolutely brilliant. They had a wheel of a time. They never stopped singing for 90 minutes. I mean, this was rubbish. Friday afternoon game in Gated. Uh, well, just to stop on the Metro, that was one of their songs. Gated, a shithole, I call it my home. Uh, all sorts of crazy songs. But I enjoyed the Daft Kids, so um, any Daft Kids who go to football, hats off, I'm all for it. Um, so I think that was just about my weekend, Baz. Yeah, we might as well talk some football then, eh? Go on then. Uh, Should we well, start with Newcastle? That was good, wasn't it? Well, uh, say hello to Callum was first in. Bootle was second in. Slick Ricks here. Uh, Lee, Lee's made me laugh on Twitter this weekend. He's been in good form. Uh, Cray is here as well. Um, Lolo is not here with a stupid bet. You know, that Newcastle match, that was, I suppose, one of the down points of my weekend was, I, I think I mentioned on Wednesday night to everybody, that I'd swap my tickets. So the lad who sits next to me has a daughter who wants to go um, who can't go, so I said, before the end of the season, we'll pick two games, you can have my tickets and take your daughter and your wife, and then the next game, I'll have your tickets so I can take both my kids. So I gave him my tickets for West Ham, and I've got his tickets for the impending 2 0 home defeat to Everton on Tuesday night. So typically, Lucky Malcolm gave away tickets for one of the most memorable games, but it was, it, everything's tied to the outcome, as much as you don't see it is, because it's 3 1 down. Like, ultimately, whether you win, lose, or draw, ultimately, it doesn't really matter. The outcome hasn't changed where the club's going, finishing position, all that shit. But it was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. It come down to 3 1 down with what, 20 minutes left or whatever it was. Uh, it was a great game, Baz, and we're uh, absolutely buzzing with it. I mean, it was a strange one because we were 3 1 down quite early in the second half, weren't we? I think it was a, there was more than 30 minutes left, I'm sure, when we were 3 1 down. And I kept sort of looking at it and thinking, there's still loads of time to get back in this. Yeah. I didn't believe we would, but I just kept thinking, it just had the feel of a game. I think because the way it was going with all the injuries, it had the feel of a game that was just spiralling out of control for us. Um, it felt like we were playing with 10 men at one point. Uh, it just like psychologically in my head, yeah. the whole thing felt like a disaster because we'd won one nil up, then you're 3-1 down. You've lost Lascelles, Almiron, Livramento, to injuries, um, it was just relentless, and he just thought everything's conspired against us. Yeah, and then as soon as we got a second, I thought we'll get something like West Ham looked beaten. As soon as we got the second, West Ham's heads went down, and they looked like they were there for the taking. Um, and a really, uh, you know, great finish, some great goals from um, Barnes. I'm not sure how I feel about the penalty. Um, it's a penalty. I think it's a penalty. Well, but you can, penalty. you can understand why, if you're on the wrong end of that, you're looking at it thinking, 
that's harsh. It is harsh on Phillips because all he is doing is just swinging for the ball. And, and Gordon's yeah. very smart, gets his foot in front of him. And it has to be given as a penalty. But it is a harsh, it's a harsh one because of the way it happens. Um, but yeah, Calvin Phillips is having an absolute nightmare, isn't he? It's, uh, yeah, he is having a bit of a shocker. Uh, Newcastle dodged a bullet there with that one. It's not his fault, like as well. He, just circumstances, I think. No, that that, that type of penalty, you've probably seen about thirty of them in the last two years, and I don't ever remember seeing a single one in the forty-five years before that. It just never used to be a thing, did it? Yeah. And now all of a sudden, it's just a new. Obviously, it, it's a VAR kind of invention because normally the referee would just wave it away, and you would never get a second look at it. But now. You get a second look at it, and the general outcome is Phillips kicks Gordon. That can only yeah. be a penalty. That was that straightforward. But Gordon puts it. It's all a load of yeah. It's all a little bit weird. Um, yeah, Gordon getting sent off is a bit uh, disappointing as well because Everton come up here on Tuesday. I think Gordon would have liked to play against them. And then we have. To, I think we'll have to go to the last game of the weekend, Baz, as well. Um, because it was just proper underwhelming. A, it was a bit of a shit game. I'm talking Man City nil, Arsenal nil. Um, it was a shit game from a betting point of view because if you want, if you if you're back in most, no one's sitting there. I think back in unders or back in under half a shot. Everyone's with a, with a bet builder. It's all both teams to score two shots on target. This this corner, and when nothing happens, no one's sending in screenshots of winners because no one's had anything at all. Like the best thing you might have done today was get your money back for a nil nil. Of three six five, if you did something where they do the refund, but I just wasn't sure either team was brave enough. Baz, like you're trying to win the league, do you know what I mean? And now all of a sudden, Liverpool are favourites now for the league. I haven't checked the um, uh, the lines actually. Let's have a look. Competitions, Premier League, outright. Okay, so Liverpool have gone five to four favourites. City two to one. Arsenal five to two. Um. So, but with a win, either one of those teams. Would have been favourites for the league, and I just wasn't sure there was enough intent behind either. Like, yeah, I, I mean, it was such a dull game. I, I know a lead put on Twitter this afternoon. Can we start the podcast with a minute silence for everyone that's wasted two hours watching this? <laughs> um, but I, particularly in the first half, I sat and watched it, and I just thought this Man City team used to be entertaining to watch. It used to be like yeah. fast flowing, swashbuckling football, goals galore, and now it's not. It's just possession. Possession, possession, and no real. There's nothing to get excited about any time, Mike. Um, it was absolute garbage. Um, Arsenal didn't really, as you say, a lot, total lack of endeavour. I think from Arsenal, but at the same time, I think there was points in the game where, despite all of Man City's possession, it, it looked as though the most likely goal might have been Arsenal that was catching it. The, the game plan. If we're sitting here and they'd scored. If maybe like Trossard had a chance where his second touch got sunk into his feet. If they'd be, if we're sitting here now talking about a one nil, you'd have talked about a perfectly executed game. Yeah, yeah absolutely. If we didn't yeah. quite get the goal, then it doesn't quite work. Like, uh, so yeah, just a little bit. It was just shit. You're just expecting the big build up for a Sunday afternoon, and it never yeah. really happened. Like, um, it was the only one that didn't come in the over one point five uh, accumulator for the week. Yeah, and that uh, didn't, didn't that happen. Last and in terms of my pick, so like. We talked about the year uh, twenty point uh, challenge, in ideally, bars after ten games, I'd want to be over ten points, uh, but I'm not. I'm sitting on eight. Um, but the one one of the week hit. So where does that get me, Baz? Does it come out? I'm not allowed to claim that. I'm not. I won't add that in. But I can rest on my rolls knowing that I gave the one one of the week out. What seven to one, six to one. Um, and when it was, I was happy. That was a really weird one because it was Brentford v Man United. So I took the draw. I bet the draw. So I was perfectly happy in the 96th minute when it was nil nil. I was sitting in the pub and I was absolutely enraged when Man United scored because oh, not only had it knackered me bet, but also Man United had done it again because they'd got marmalized yesterday. They were absolutely shite. Um, and then. Brentford went and uh, equalised. So, from a winner in the 96th to abject despair, in, uh, I then got it back to a 1 1. So, that went all right. The other games, Baz, I just needed one other goal. Um, Tottenham uh, team total, or Tottenham, sorry, over three and a half, couldn't get the third. Chelsea team total, 
couldn't get the third, having played an hour against the second worst team in the league with 10 men. Forest Palace over two and a half. Either of them, they're both hitting the crossbar and all sorts. So any of them, I think with a normal little bit of luck, I was really pleased with Faden Fulham. Um, it's 7 to 10. Sheffield United, that fourth goal got disallowed. I thought it was incredibly harsh because they go 4 1 up and that's game over. So the only ones I really was disappointed in in terms of the process was Everton. Um, and that was it. The, the underdogs today, Brighton got in front, couldn't hold on. I took Arsenal. Like we said, they could easily have won. Much worse three to one shots yield back than Arsenal. Um, much worse seven to one shots than Brighton. And Wolves were the other dog I took. And they miss a huge chance. Eight Nuri misses a huge chance at nil nil. And the first goal is really important. Um, so yeah, I'm sitting behind the eight ball bars. I'm uh, I'm on eight after ten. So I need to make, pick up twelve points uh, to get myself back to SP over the next few days. Yeah, I mean my picks were bang average. Really, I took Newcastle in the early game. I done well in the Chelsea game to take Burnley. I took both teams to score, but also tipped up Burnley to score two or more. Yeah, that was a nice uh, pick. Seven to two which came off nicely. Uh, and I think my scorer with money is uh, scoring for Fulham uh, against Sheffield United, the third, third goal. But yeah, a bit of a struggle for me this week. Uh, anyone else? I know Lee sent us his pick. Sim has sent me his as well. Uh, so if anyone else has done better, because like I say, it was, I think the, the process were right. Tottenham to concede and goals in the game, but it finishes 2-1. We're a little bit, we'll fade Chelsea a little bit. Um, but took them on the team total. Didn't quite want Sheffield United. Didn't want Man United. Um, so yeah, we weren't a million a million miles away. Like Baz, we keep on. We will keep plugging away. Um, okay, we'll make some picks in a moment. Let me tell you first about oh, cut a peer to peer social betting platform, US based and available in forty states. Uh, peer to peer social betting is a new and better way to be. Bet directly against your friends or other users. Uh, cut off as low, big, fully customizable odds. You can create your own bets. That's the best thing about that. Uh, cut handles the payments as well. So loads of good stuff. Download Cut today in the App Store or over at cut.com. That's K U T T. Use promo code SGPN for a 10% deposit bonus. Um, Underdog Fantasy, the easiest place to play fantasy sports and the fastest growing app. In the industry, just pick the players that you like on a on a card uh, between two and five, and then go higher or lower on their stat tool. You can win up to one hundred times your money. Sign up today with the promo code PLGP and get your first deposit doubled to one hundred dollars, as well as an instant pick and special. Visit underdogfantasy.com, find them in the app store. Don't forget to register with our promo code PLGP and get your first deposit doubled up to $100. Must be 18 or over. Present the state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Concerned with your play, call 1-800-522-4700 or visit www.ncpgambling.org. Right then. Uh, full slate on starting Tuesday night. Uh, Newcastle are first up again here. Yeah, they were first up at the weekend. Uh, first up again here, yeah, Newcastle taking on Everton. Um, Newcastle 19 to 20, minus 105. The draw 11 to 4, plus 275. Everton 11 to 4, plus 275. Um, so, I mean, I'd, what do you make about the Newcastle game? I've got no idea. I took the over shots on target just because I thought it was going to be a wild one. The the shots on target line was nine and a half. Well, there was seven goals, let alone everything else. So that cashed really, really easily in that first game. Um, and just about any Newcastle game at the moment, you're happy to take both teams to score. You're happy to take total goals, team totals, anything. The problem, the one team you probably wouldn't want to do it with is Everton. Um, because again, at the weekend, they didn't look like scoring. They did score in the 87th minute. But I'd had, they hadn't had a shot on target. Um, the last saw of the latest report after about an hour or something, they hadn't had an attempt at goal. Um, I spoke to Dave Horan's duffel coat, issued 12 80 pence in the pub on Saturday night, and he just said they don't look like scoring, they haven't got it in them. And then, obviously, hilarious old goal at the end against Coleman. Um, Newcastle won't change, there's no point 
they, they can't. They've got more injuries. They lost Lascelles. They lost uh, Tino, maybe Kraft, Almiron, and Anthony Gordon suspended. Um, but I think they've got enough forward players. The, the one thing about Gordon being out, the the only plus side is Harvey Barnes. Hopefully, should get a start. And I think he'd probably make a few changes anyway. I think Elliot Anderson might get a game. Um, so really, you, you handicap Newcastle. How you've handicapped them for the last two months, like it's just Everton. Absolutely, I don't. I don't know what to do with Everton at all. Um, before the West Ham game, I was convinced Everton were going to win, but um, and I would have picked Everton. But at the weekend, they just didn't show me enough. Again, I thought they looked like they were likely to pop up with a win, and I'm not sure they are. Ultimately, Barry, we've just seen Newcastle win at home against a better team than Everton. We've seen Everton lose away against a worse team um, in Bournemouth. And that's it. That's the handicap. I'm going to regret this, Baz. Newcastle on the money line, 19 to 20, minus 105. Well, yeah, I mean, I took Newcastle against West Ham and I can't see anything other than taking the same pick here. I haven't seen what we saw from... Newcastle showing some, you know, good resilience to come back from that situation. Um, but Everton also continuing to struggle. You've mentioned more injuries for Newcastle. Lascelles is now out nine months to add to Botman's nine months. Yeah. Uh, Livermento probably won't be back in time. Um, Almiron. And as you say, Gordon will be suspended. But I was going to say exactly the same as you. We haven't had a glimpse of, of Barnes yesterday at his best. I think we'll still create enough going forward with Barnes, Murphy, Isak. Even um, Lewis Hall got... made a little difference, you know. He had a really good game. Yeah. He looked very, very tidy. So if he can just come in slitting for Tino, like mm-hmm. the, the 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 extra injuries, I don't think damage us as much if they I, the, I those players the same, can come in. I thought Lewis Hall, they, they seem to be trusting him a little bit more now. They played him against Man City for a bit, good chunk of the game and they, they brought him in for a good chunk yesterday and he looked looked decent. Um, so as you say, if, if Livermento is out, Hall will probably come straight in there. We could do with having Trippier back. I'm not sure if he's anywhere near being fit, but we'll see. Um, but I think we've still got, like you, I think we've got enough going forward to cause enough problems against Everton. Everton now 12 games without a win. They've lost three on the bounce. Um, and they just don't score enough goals, as you say. That I think they've only scored more than a single goal once in the last 12 games. And we know Newcastle are capable of hitting twos and threes at home all the time. And I just don't think Everton can keep up with that. So Newcastle at 10 to 11 has to be the pick for me. I'll take Newcastle to beat Everton as well. At 10 to 11. Team ride on Newcastle. I don't know what it was about this card, Barry, but eight of the 10 games, I just got outright bets. Home win, away win, or draw. Um it, they just all sort of jumped out, and that's rare. I, I haven't had to go looking for call, um, corners, shot, sport teams to score, handicaps. Um, eight of the ten, I was just happy to take a plain old uh, money line. Tuesday night, 7.30, Nottingham Forest take on Fulham. Uh, Forest, 6 to 4, plus 150. The draw, 23 to 10, plus 230. Fulham, 7 to 4, plus 175, Bazza. Yeah, I should say here, I should have said start really. A lot of my handicaps for these games are, are quite brief due to a total lack of enthusiasm today. Um, so it won't take me very long to go through a lot of these. I, I found it a bit trickier than you did. It sounds like you've sort of had some pretty strong leans. Um, Forrest Fulham was, was a difficult one. It turns out you were right the other day and you can't back Fulham on the road. Uh, I did. Um, yeah. And actually, I thought Fulham looked more likely to go and nick it. Haven't got to 3-3. Three, three. They still had plenty of time. I think it was 15 minutes injury time in that one. I thought they might have, might have nicked it for me, but wasn't to be. Uh, eight consecutive games, over two and a half goals for Fulham now. Uh, but on the opposite side of that, Forrest have just gone four in a row to the under two and a half. I still don't trust Forrest. Um, they don't really look like beating anyone at the moment. Um, so I am going to take Fulham again here, but not to win. I'm going to take them in the team total market to score two or more. Fulham have scored two or more in six of the last eight games now. I'm getting 11 to 8 for it here. I think it's a decent plus money price um, for Fulham, who are in good scoring form. Um, so, yeah, the pick for me, Fulham, Forest v Fulham, the pick is Fulham team total over 1.5 at 11 to 8 plus 137. So, when I said the other day, Barry, you you're saying I said you can't take Fulham. Well, you can't take Fulham at that price. You can't take Fulham at 7 to 10 minus 142. 
You can't take Fulham. It's seven to four plus one seventy five. Surely the wrong team. Are favourite here, aren't they? Forest are demonstrating an inability to beat anybody, uh, and Fulham are just the other way around. Um, it is. It was the away form. What was it? Two wins, I think, which is why I didn't want anything to do with them against Sheffield. Um, at that price, at seven to ten, but it's seven to four. Um, I'm absolutely happy. The, the price is just much more, much more appealing. And um, the wrong team are favourites. Um, Fulham can nick this seven to four plus one seventy five. Uh Tuesday, seven forty five. Kick off Bournemouth taking on Crystal Palace. Uh, Bournemouth are um, eleven to thirteen minus one one seven. The draw thirteen to five plus two sixty. Crystal Palace are three to one here. Um, Bournemouth beat Everton. Not entirely sure. Um, what what you can take from that. Um, this, they've had three wins and a draw in the last four games um, and back-to-back -back home wins. But again, both kind of unconvincing home wins, late own goal, late weird own goal, and then a comeback from 3-0 down against Luton. Um, so I'm not sure you'd, you'd be hanging your hat on Bourne with a little bit like Newcastle. Like the results are in the book, but it's still not making you rush to empty your pockets on them. Um, part of the... Palace handicap the other day was that they just don't lose against teams around them, Baz. Um, in the last five games, I mean, this picks itself. In the last five games, 1-1 one, one v Forest, 1-1 one, one v Luton, 1-1 one, one v Everton. Is this not just the same game again? It just makes too much sense. It's too easy, Baz. Uh, the draw, 13-5, plus 260. And we're going to go for consecutive, Barry. 1-1 one, one of the week. Bournemouth won. Crystal Palace won. It's 13 to 2 plus 650. There we go. You were telling me over to even bob your head along there, Baz. It was a mild, a mild bob. Uh, Callum's asking if anyone's got the boxing on. I haven't got the boxing on, Callum. I don't like the old face punching. So, one thing I never really got into, like, there's a few. I mean, rugby union. Formula One, other bits and bobs, but, but boxing's just bottom of my list. Like, never ever really blows me skirt up. Um, I've got the baseball on here. I've got the one I'm watching, Cubs at Rangers. 8-5 Cubs is what's going on there. Um, 7.45 on Tuesday, Burnley taking on Wolverhampton. One. Sorry, sorry. am I not, am I not, allowed, not allowed to make a pick for Bournemouth Palace? Did we not do? Oh, shit, I sorry. No. Well, I'll just make my pick, uh, if you don't mind. Sorry, man. Um, I've went for Bournemouth. There you go. Uh, Did you? It's a tricky okay. one. I mean, they're in good form at the moment. And I get your point, Palace, you know, pick up the points in, in the games, you know, teams down that end. Um, but it's similar with Bournemouth. The three wins and a draw in the last four games. Luton, Sheffield United, Everton, Burnley. So they're playing the teams down the bottom end and getting points out of them. Um, Palace just aren't winning many games. Just one win in seven. And away from home, it's even worse. I don't think they've got no win in 10 away from home now. And they've lost six of the last 10 away games. So they lose often enough. There's plenty of draws in there. So, but you know, I don't mind yours as well. But I was just confident enough for me to take Bournemouth 17 to 20. I'll take Bournemouth to beat Palace at 17 to 20. Uh, Burnley take on Wolverhampton Wanderers. Burnley are 7 to 4 plus 175. The draw 5 to 2 plus 250. Wolves 11 to 8 plus 137, Barry. Um, Burnley on a streak, Malcolm. Three games unbeaten now. Streak. Wow. Um, really good result that draw against Chelsea, particularly yeah. going down to 10 men after 40 minutes and being able to come from behind twice after that. Um, you know, there should be a little bit of positivity around um, around Burnley at the moment. It, it is, you know, they need wins as opposed to draws. But it's a start, five points from the last three games. Back-to-back -back defeats for Wolves now. Loss at Villa um, following that defeat to Coventry in the Cup. Um, and I think at first I, I sort of come in and thinking Burnley with a little bit of momentum and at home here could appeal slightly. But then I thought the price is still far too short. Seven to four. Yeah, it is. Isn't, isn't big enough for me to, to want to take Burnley here. Um, I don't really like Wolves either in terms of a pick. They are missing a, a few key players and... and I think that is showing Chan's missing Neto 
uh, Bellegarde and another one. We've got a few of their starters missing and possibly struggling a little bit as a result. But I've gone for goals. Um, the, Burnley, Burnley have managed to find their way a little bit in front of goal. They've scored twice now in three consecutive games. Um, Wolves, I think, will play a part in it. But I think Burnley will definitely go on the score sheet here. It is a short price for over two and a half goals. It's eight to 11. I don't mind it. I'm taking the over two and a half at eight to 11. Or you can tag on the both teams to score, which I think will be good. Both teams to score and over two and a half goals is evens in the Burnley v Wolves game. Um, I love the price on Wolves here. I think the prices are close together after the weekend results. Um, so Burnley picking that point up. And like you say, that will do sort of wonders for the, the team spirit and stuff. And then Wolves got turned over at Villa, although there wasn't much in it. Um, and that first goal was important. You see, huge missed chance from Aitan Nuri. Um, first goal, crucial. So I think the prices would be a little bit... Burnley would be near a 3-1 to one in Wolves. Maybe six to five, five to four. Um, and Wolves have been in decent enough form. I'm just getting the the better team, very considerably the better team at eleven to eight plus one thirty seven. Dead simple. Like I said, I had loads of these tonight, and I didn't have to look very far again. Um, if you are, yeah, I'm happy to take Wolves at eleven to eight uh, to turn over Burnley. So yeah, that will be my pick. Wolves on the money line. Now the final game on Tuesday night is a. 8.15 kick-off, uh, 3.15 Eastern time. We're back to five hours again. Courtney, the uh, the clock's changed. Uh, West Ham are 2-1. to one. Tottenham are 11-10, plus 110. And the draw is 3-1. to one. Um, Dead simple, Barry. I'm getting 11-10 to 10 on the better team. Spurs are better than West Ham. I think West Ham are a little bit flattered maybe at the weekend either, even by being 3-1. Well, it's a second goal. Shouldn't really have stood. So they're going to half time 1 1. And like I said, at various points, Newcastle completely fell apart. West Ham then get themselves 3 1 up and they still managed to get beat. Um, Tottenham were given a good game by Luton. Luton did that to most teams, uh, but did get it done. Probably good for another goal or two. They're still fighting for fourth place. They're the better team in the odds against um, 11 to 10 for Tottenham. Barry plus 110. Spurs on the money line. Yeah, I wasn't a fan of Spurs here. Um, I mean, West Ham, obviously, a bit of a psychological blow that, losing a two-goal lead. Um, be a bit wounded following that, but they've got a good record recently against Spurs, and that's what sort of drew me to, to West Ham a little bit. They've won the last two head-to-heads. They beat them 2-1 earlier in the season. That was at Spurs. Um, and at home, they're unbeaten in four head-to-heads. I think it's three wins and a draw in the last four at home in this fixture. And the home form generally for West Ham is OK. They've got just one defeat in 15 home games. Uh, I was astonished looking at that. They have got a lot of home draws. Um, but Arsenal are the only team to go there. Since October, Arsenal are the only team to go there and win. So I think West Ham's home form is good enough that I don't really like Spurs. I think Spurs' away form is questionable lately. They've got defeats to Brighton, Wolves, Fulham recently and they could be decent comparisons for this game I think so for me West Ham at two to one definitely appeals to me more than the 11 to 10 Spurs it's not where I've ended up going um but that that was my initial thought on in terms of a winner but I do like the game to have a few goals West Ham games have gone over three and a half in four of the last five um Spurs games have had 12 consecutive going over two and a half and six of the 12 so far or more, you do need four to get anywhere near a decent price in this game. Uh, but I think we'll get them. I think there will be goals here. Over three and a half goals at evens between West Ham and Spurs. That'll be the pick for me here. OK, we move on to the Wednesday night games. I want to tell you about Hall of Fame bets. Win bigger by betting smarter this NBA season with Hall of Fame bets. The sports betting analytics platform for parlays, player props and game lines. Research every NBA and soccer bet with historical stats and data. Uh, put your parlay ideas in the Hall of Fame Bet's revolutionary parlay optimizer to get hit rates broken down by leg, expected probabilities, uh, sort players by hit rate for your bets, find out who's hot and who's uh, good value. Stop betting in the dark. Join over 30,000 users researching with Hall of Fame Bets to craft more intelligent 
data-driven parlays, download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit hofbets.com. Use code SGPN to get 50% off your first month. Start researching, start winning with Hall of Fame Bets. Wednesday, 7.30, uh, 2.30 Eastern Time. Arsenal take on Luton. Arsenal are 1-7, to seven, minus 700. The draw is 7-1. to one, And Luton are 18-1. to one. Uh, Bit of line movement, Baz. There were 16s two hours ago, Luton. They're now 18-1. to one. Friendless in the market, Baz. Arsenal v Luton, what you got? Yeah, I thought I saw Luton at 20-1 to one at one point earlier. Um... Mm. So they have moved it around a bit today. Uh, where do you start? Hard to find a way here, really. Arsenal so short that it does become difficult to back them. I think Arsenal will win it, I suspect. But where do you go with a bet? Um, Arsenal had that little run recently where they were battering everyone, 5 0 6 0 all of that lot. But more recently, just a 2-1 win over Brentford. Tight games against Porto. 0-0 draw today. Luton have got no win in nine. So I'm not entertaining the idea of backing Luton here. I was prepared to take them at 10 to 1 the other day away at the Spurs. And to be fair, you talked earlier about having some, you know, you felt like you got decent value out of your Brighton pick, for example. Same for me with Luton. Yeah. 10 to 1. Yeah. You yeah. go all up. You're 1 0 up at half time. And even in the 85th minute, you know, going into 80 minutes or whatever, the 1 1, they're in the game. You've got a chance. Um, so. You know, worse again, worse 10 to 1 shots to be had. Ultimately, a loser. But I looked at this one, I just, I can't, I couldn't make a case at, at any price really for, for Luton here. Um, but what I did say about Luton last week, and it still stands in this one, is, is to keep it tight in these big games against big sides. They keep games tight. Um, City have, have won, I think, twice by a single goal. Uh, Spurs beat them earlier in the season by a single goal. They've had a draw against Liverpool. Uh, they held Liverpool to a, 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 a draw at home. Did get battered off them at home, uh, away from home, sorry. But it's very rare um, that they do get a bit of a hiding. Uh, and the handicap line here is generous, I think. Luton are getting plus two and a half goals, which means you can cash a winner as long as they don't lose by three or more. Now, there's no doubt Arsenal are capable of covering that. You know, it, it wouldn't be a massive surprise if Arsenal do win 3 4 nil or something. But as I say, Luton aren't getting battered by anyone at the moment. Only Liverpool, Liverpool that Liverpool game is the only game in the last 20 um, that they've lost by three goals. Um, and I've mentioned those games against City, Spurs, single goal wins. They're getting on the score sheet every week is the other thing with Luton. And if they do that here, then I think the handicap's got a really good chance. I do think Arsenal will win the game. I just can't get uh, Arsenal as a, as a bet. I don't want to take Arsenal to win by three or more. I'll take Luton plus two and a half on the handicap at 10 to 11. Um, 100% wanted a factor, Luton and myself, Barry, and you just went back through that 20-game record. Um, what else have Luton done? 19 games in a row, Baz. Scored a goal. Yeah. Um, 19 games in a row. That's not happening by accident. Do you know what I mean? Um, so at, at that point, when you've got a one to seven favourite, I found both teams to score at 19 to 20 minus 105. I stopped looking. That'll do me. Um, and again, I think we've we've handicapped the game this, similarly. If you say Luton score, then Arsenal maybe beat them three one or what have you. Then yeah, um, I've done the same thing. But I'm happy to take the both teams to score at 19 to 20. Minus one oh five. Well, I probably prefer your pick to mine. To be honest, now you've mentioned that. Um, obviously, I've got the. What the about on my yours? side? Um, I've got a, a you know one nil or a two nil Arsenal. I, I would still win, but um, I, I, I agree. For me to win my handicap, I probably need Luton to get that goal anyway. Um, so yeah, I don't don't mind your pick at all. Um, seven thirty on Wednesday night is Brentford. Against Brighton, Brentford are six to four plus one fifty. They've drifted out a little bit. They were seven to five plus one forty an hour ago. Um, the draw is seven to four. No, it isn't. The draw is eleven to four plus two seventy five. And Brighton are six to four plus one fifty. So it's a match on the books. Bookies can't split them. Luckily, Barry, I can. Uh, I think Brentford are due a win, Baz. Um, 
they were the better team against Man United last night. Um, that's not saying much because literally everybody who plays Man United is the better team. Um, they were good against Arsenal. I kind of talked them up a little bit because um, Arsenal only won it late against them. Brighton played all right today. I must admit they were in the game. Uh, they tried hard. They they had uh, sort of lot lots of pressure in half chances in the last five or ten minutes. They've still only won four away games, Baz. Um, so taking them at six to four plus one fifty doesn't really appeal to me uh, at all. Uh, the last away game before the Liverpool one today, they got humped three nil at Fulham, which just about sums Brighton up like they're perfectly capable of doing that, just throwing in a stinker. And this is the one I think I say Brighton are due. Brighton have got a long time without winning, but they look like they're coming good. They they were very unlucky last night. Um, and could have had a couple of better results uh, recently. The one chance they did get against Burnley, they blobbed it with a red card. But uh, six to four, Brentford uh, plus one fifty will be my pick, Baz. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't split them either. To be honest, uh, it wasn't as bold as you to pick a winner here. But Brighton's away form is really poor, as you say. Actually, four game losing streak now on the road. Like you, I thought they did play quite well at times against Liverpool today. But they are really hard to back at the moment. But Brentford, on the other hand, you know, one win in 10. Struggling defensively, no clean sheet. Or, or just one clean sheet, I think it was, in 19 games now. And and that's something I keep going back to with them. The both teams just scores hitting all the time. Over two and a half are hitting all the time. Um, and that's what I, I like here. It went under last night. It did hit the both teams to score. But there's enough form in the games for Brentford. That uh, the under over two and a half and the both teams to score, I think, is a good shout. Yeah, again, it's another little short one, like, but um, the pick for me, Brentford v Brighton, is over two and a half and both teams to score at eight to 11. So we had a little pop up man on my uh, computer just started talking to me there. Um, Wednesday, the later game, the 8 15 kickoff is Manchester City against Aston Villa. Uh, Man City are seven to twenty-five minus three fifty-seven. The draw nineteen to four plus four seventy-five. Villa seventeen to two plus eight fifty. Baz. Yeah, so I think my handicapping in this game's probably been skewed a little bit by what I watched today, and then it just dawning on me how how dull City are to watch at the moment, and it's not just today's game. They aren't losing many games, particularly at home. They, they don't lose. But they aren't hitting teams for tons of goals. They've got far too many draws in, in there at the moment. They've struggled against sides in the top five all season. I don't, I, I'm sure I've heard they haven't won against the top five side all season. We know they lost to Arsenal, drew to Arsenal. Uh, they've got a draw with Liverpool twice. Um, just struggling in those big games. Liverpool or uh, sorry, Villa are a, a top five side at the moment and beat them earlier in the season at Villa Park. Um, Villa's form has dipped a little, but away from home, they've actually not lost a game in eight, four wins and four draws. Most of their uh, recent defeats or, or all of their recent defeats have been uh, in home games. Bit of a change in the trend from the start of the season. But there's one bet here that stands out for me, and 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 it's you know having seen what we've seen today is the under two and a half goals. It's two to one, okay. which is a massive oh, price, I think. It's a big price. Man City in the league have gone under two and a half in six of the last seven games. Nil nil today. They had one nil wins against Brentford, one nil against Bournemouth, two nil against Everton, and a couple of one one draws in there. Chelsea was a one one draw. Um, Liverpool, another one. So six of the last seven gone under two and a half. And Villa games now, they've, they've generally had lots of goals this season. But they've just seen a 1 1 and a 2 0. Uh, so they've gone under into the last two games as well. I just think it's too big a price. Uh, it's not a, a hate back in and under, but 2 to 1 for a team who are regularly going under at the moment. Uh, I'll take the under two and a half goals, Man City versus Villa at 2 to 1. If you want a slightly safer play, you can take the under three and a half and still get close to evens. I think it's about 10 to 11. Wow. Um... Very much, Barry, that's the R sniffer of the week. Like, um, I didn't even get into those markets, but yeah. Um, I did the baseball show last week and Scott made a pick. 
which had all the hallmarks of the R sniffer of the week. And I tried to explain that to him and to the listeners. And he just looked at me like I was a stonewall idiot. Like it just uh, some things don't translate very well from uh, British to American sense of humour. And the R sniffer of the week, I was I was told him the whole airport dog scenario, and it just was nothing. Stony face. He just absolutely straight batted me back. So yeah, some fell on stony ground, Baz. Um, yeah, City again. I've got to put a little question mark beside them because it was half time when I was making these notes today. And I thought if they might come out and blitz us and win 3-0, so I put my question mark. But I was pretty sure I wasn't going to be impressed by them, and I wasn't. Um, everything you've just said, they are interminably dull to watch, whether or not that's a symptom of how teams are setting up against them. I don't think it is, though, because you would have thought they had those 1-0s against Brentford and Bournemouth quite recently. Um, and they, they would... They always blow those teams away. Villa are a good side. Um, they're still winning plenty of games, but like you say, kind of there's a little thing instinctively you think they have had a little bit of dip in form, but they've won five of the last eight games, man. And that's again, that's top four, sort of four. Um, I took Arsenal today, not a terrible pick by any stretch of three to one. I still think City have got a home defeat in them, but uh, just they've got that look about them. I'm going to take Villa. Uh, Villa seventeen to two plus eight fifty. Uh, Villa a good side and say City you've got one coming. Villa going to knock them over. Uh, Aston Villa on the money line to beat Manchester City seventeen to two plus eight fifty. But next up, the penultimate game. Uh, two games here on Thursday, um, seven thirty kick off. Liverpool taking on Sheffield United. Liverpool are one to twelve minus twelve fifty or thereabouts. Uh, the draw seventeen to two plus eight fifty. Sheffield United, 20-1. to 1. Uh, If you want to double up Sheffield United with Luton, 400-1 uh, to 1, that double on the Monday night bars. <laughs> uh, Luton, Sound and Sheffield United double. Really, really hard to handicap. Um, obviously, because you've got a 12-1 to 1 on shot. But, Baz, you made the case very succinctly about Luton running all the teams close. Sheffield United never get smashed away from home. Now, I'm going to regret this. It's got <laughs> seven. Oh, okay, hear me out, Barry. Uh, Sheffield United never get mullered away from home. They've only lost by more than two once all season. Okay? Um, that's 14 away games. They've lost by more than two once. Arsenal humped them 5 0, if you remember. Uh, Liverpool have got big games all over the shop. They've got a lot of injuries. They might just be happy to manage this game out, Baz. Um, Sheffield United, plus two and a half. It's 13 to 12, plus 108. That would have cast you 13 out of 14 games, and you're getting plus 108. Easy money, Baz, isn't it? Uh, Sheffield United, plus two and a half. 13 to 12, plus 108. Barry's rubbing his head in dismay. Yeah, I, I don't like it. Sheffield United are going to have to score a couple of goals to hit that line. I think. Um, I just, I think two it will be a walk. In... Sorry, two nil Liverpool. Yeah, I think this will be a walk in the park for Liverpool. Um, possibly the biggest surprise of the weekend was Sheffield United scoring three goals. Uh, much less of a shock was them conceding three. I, I get what you say. The the home form is where they seem to absolutely hemorrhage the goals, but I don't think. There's anything in that particularly? I don't think they're they're a particularly better team away from home or anything. They're just not a very good team, and they just concede loads of goals. It just happens to be that they haven't played all of the big teams at uh, away from home yet. Uh, as you say, Arsenal spanked them at, at the Emirates, and uh, Liverpool will do the same here. Liverpool had enough chances today to score more. Thirty attempts on goal, I think today. I think they'll run up a score. I need them to score four, Malcolm. <laughs> to get to evens on the team total market. And I don't normally like, normally when it gets to the point where you're taking teams to win handicaps by threes and fours or scoring four just to get to a decent price, I don't usually like it. But on this occasion, Liverpool at home have scored four or more goals nine times already this season. I mean, a lot of that's in the Europa League against lesser opposition, but Sheffield United are lesser opposition, let's be honest. So, yeah, four or more goals nine times is, is a is a big number for Liverpool at home. Um, and they're now playing the worst defence in the league. 
And they're getting, you know, you've mentioned they have got a few injuries, but they're getting back to full strength up, up the top end of the pitch. Um, I'm going to take Liverpool to score four or more against Sheffield United at evens. That's my pick here. Liverpool team total over 3.5 goals. Okay, so we'll cash on, we'll both cash four, two. if Liverpool win 5-3, bad. Yeah. I like that. I'll put that in. We'll get, let's get some odds on that. We'll play in that. One, two, three, four, five. One. Two, three, 125 to one, but uh, is the price on that one. Uh, the final game, what a belter this is. Uh, you can watch two bald men argue over a comb, or you can tune into Chelsea versus Manchester United. Uh, Chelsea 19 to 20, minus 105. The draw 11 to 4, plus 275. Manchester United 5 to 2, plus 250. What the hell do you do with this, Barry? <laughs> well, I come into it thinking uh, I knew exactly what I wanted to do with it and then decided to do something completely opposite in the end. Okay. So, uh, poor results for Good both of them at the weekend. Uh, two poor results, but nothing that was hugely surprising from either of these teams from what we've seen. If Man U had won that game with that late goal, it would have been an absolute travesty. Um, so, I was pleased to see Brentford go up the other end and... Uh, have you um, caught on the Mark Woodbridge bit yet? No, no, I haven't. Ah, I, I, I like to do that. It's, I'm getting a bit very scared. rarely you get the them going one nil up and the equaliser all in the same clip. Normally, you get to the first clip and then you get the second clip. Yeah. This is all in the same three minute clip, and it's wonderful to watch. But oh, I'll have to go back and watch it. Um, what a tick. He's an absolute tick, yeah, Chelsea. Feeling to be 10-man Burnley, having gone ahead twice, was really poor. So we've got two underperforming teams, two managers under pressure, probably both of them on borrowed time, I think. Be surprised if either of them are there starting next season. I actually came to this one wanting to take Chelsea, just because I think they've got a bit more about them on occasions than Man United have. Um but not a lot. <laughs> and then, then I looked at the prices and, and they're under evens and I can't take Chelsea at under evens yet. No. I thought they might be a bit closer. I thought we might have seen them pretty much a match here, but um, it was a bit too short. So I don't want to back Man United to win at 5-2, to two, but I just don't think there's much splitting these two teams at all. And the 5-2 to two Man United definitely looks better than the even money for Chelsea. Um, in the end, I've decided to go with Man United, but not to win just to score a couple. And it's going back to what I said last week with Chelsea, is at the moment they're conceding plenty of goals. Five of their last six games have saw them concede two goals. Burnley have done it. Leicester, Leeds, Newcastle, Wolves. So they're not even, you know, conceding goals against the top-end sides here. Two championship teams in there. Burnley put a couple past them with 10 men. Um, so, yeah... I just think, man, you can get a couple of goals here. Uh, Chelsea games are full of goals at, at, at both ends at the moment. But the pick for me will be Man United team total over 1.5 at 11 to 8. Um, yeah, don't like that, Baz. Um, and I'll they explain why now. I've, really. I've, no, no, I've, no one. I defy anyone to pick, make a pick on this game and be really keen on it. Because, I mean, my notes here Chelsea, no thanks. Man United, no thanks. Um, I didn't want the goals or the totals because they're both capable of doing anything. It was just a right mess. Um, so because I didn't want to take either team, the draw stands out in absolute mile bars. The draw jumps off the page. Um, neither team are very good at winning football matches. Um, so 11-4 to four for the draw, plus 275. But this isn't another 1-1 one, one of the week, Barry. This is the nil-nil of the week. Uh, this is the newly uh, inception. What's the word? Something like that. Um, the first instalment of the nil-nil draw of the week, which is 20-1. to 1. <laughs> So fill your boots on uh, Chelsea nil, Man United nil. Absolute dog shit. Um, yeah, we'll take the draw, but yeah, I couldn't take anything. It's absolutely awful. And I think that's it, Baz. I, do you know... I'm very, I'd be very surprised, Barry, if I haven't got 10 out of 10 here. Like, I'm very, very surprised. I think it's almost inevitable that I go 10 for 10. Uh, I've never been as confident 
this was just so straightforward for a man of my ability to work all of these out. Um, so we've got to go through the uh, dog and goal scorer and accumulator. Yeah, I'm far less confident uh, that I'm going to go 10 out of 10 here. Um, I don't know. I'm just not feeling it today. So uh, we'll never, never know. Maybe drunken bars might be the uh, the way. We'll find out. Uh, underdog for me, Malcolm, will be West Ham to beat Spurs. Um, I can't even remember what price we said West Ham were, but that's where I've gone with underdog. To, to be honest, I didn't really fancy too many of the underdogs. But yeah, that's where I've gone for my underdog, West Ham to beat Spurs. Uh, scorer for me is Harvey Barnes, 9-4. to Two goals at the weekend will surely start against Everton um, with Gordon out suspended. And I think 9-4 is a good price. Um, and I think he had 7-1 for him first goal and 7-1 to last goal. My Aka is at both teams to score. Who was your goal scorer, score. brother? Stop listening. Harvey Barnes. I've gone for Barnes. Oh, Harvey Barnes. Nine to four. Yeah, Nine to four any time. Nice. Um, and, yeah, finish off with the Nagas. Both teams to score because there was tons of both to score at the weekend. So we'll follow that up. Forest v Fulham. West Ham v Spurs. Brentford v Brighton. Chelsea v Man United. All both teams to score at four to one. Obviously, your Chelsea Man United nil nil doesn't fit in there. Um, no. But that's where I've got my act. Both teams to score: Forest, Fulham, West Ham, Spurs, Brentford, Brighton, Chelsea, Man United. Four to one, all to score. Okay, um, I've got quite a few underdogs to choose from, but I'm not going to go with a big fancy Villa one. Um, I'll go with uh, Fulham at seven to four, uh, plus one seventy-five. Um, are you having a little look for that? Bet that Daz has put in, Baz. Yeah, uh, you quite... that's not, yeah. Not, it's uh, not going to be much Reynolds. of a price. Sorry, it's not going to be much of a price. It's not going to be much of a price. But listen, there's no such thing as a bad price winner, Baz. Fulham is my underdog, seven to four. Anytime goal scorer, Baz. We we keep getting on the other side of this West Ham Tottenham game. I think Tottenham are going to beat West Ham comfortably, and I'm going to take team over in Baz. You know, I like taking people who can't score. Did he get one at the weekend? My handicap here, Baz, was that West Ham were very vulnerable to the wide attacking players at the weekend. Anthony Gordon and Harvey Barnes ran them ragged. Tactics, Baz. I'm a tactical genius. That gets Timo Werner in the score here. Six to one, um, first and last, and seven to four, plus 175, any time. And because I've got 10 out of 10 right, I didn't want to mess it up by going for a really stupid parlay. So I just have kept it really simple, Baz. Just like a little little cherry on the cake. Money line double. Tottenham and Wolves. Uh, Tottenham win at West Ham. Wolves win at Burnley. Pays four to one, Barry. Uh, we are on the opposite sides of absolutely everything. Um, I think that probably says more about our uh, reaction to alcohol than anything else because we've both ha handicapped these games hung over and come out on <laughs> different pages. So there you go. Um, four to seven. For Liverpool and Salah, what's yes. that about minus one? Yeah, Daz in the chat asked what price Liverpool are to win with Salah at the score anytime. You get them a four to seven, which I suppose, in comparison to the one to 12 for Liverpool just to win, isn't a bad up uptick, I'd say. Because if you oh, know, no. Salah's always going to be in amongst it somewhere, you would expect. So, yeah, if you want to want to tag Salah in for a goal, uh, you'll get the only thing I think about that game, Baz, is when I said I think Liverpool might just manage out the two nil. Is I think you might make changes. Got a lot of stuff going on. Um, it might he might play uh, Dan's up front. Um, I can't remember his face. I keep wanting to say Scott Dan's, but that's his dad, isn't it? Um, Jane, short... Jane. Is it Jane Dan? Jane, yeah. Um, and Bobby Clark and people like that. So Salah might get fifty-two minutes and hiked off. You know that sort of thing. Um, that would be my only concern about that. You might not get ninety minutes out of them. Um, but apart from that, yeah, you're right. It's uh, it turns a one to twelve shot into a perfectly workable four to seven. So um that's not a bad angle, Daz, at all. Baz, anything else you want to tell the people? We've just clicked over an hour. Are you big question for me, Baz, is I'll know how hungover you are when you answer this. Are you gonna have a glass of red wine tonight? No. No, no. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, that absolutely. is more hungover than I've known you for many years then, sir. The problem is I drank all the wine last night. There isn't oh, any I wine. Know. I drank the place dry. Um 
But no, I hadn't had a drink, Malcolm, for about seven weeks leading into last yeah. night. Uh, and the plan is I won't have another drink for another seven weeks now, um, at least. So I'm trying to be good, but being a bit healthier at the moment, Mal. Three stone down so far this year. Three stone? Um, so the, uh, That's amazing. The, the drink is, is being put on ice again for a bit. I'll, I'll see even it just for special occasions at the moment. Good lad. Uh, you're an inspiration to us all, Barry. Um, right. <laughs> Callum in the chat just said Baz was steaming last night. I would have loved to have seen that TikTok. Is it has that been recorded anywhere? No, it hasn't. I don't know what I was <laughs> thinking. I, I literally, Callum can probably recollect more of my night than I can because I have no idea what went on it, or how what? long I was on there for. I just know I was on there. I somehow managed to clip up your one one of the week, put it on Twitter last night, um, and I had no idea I'd done that until this morning. Like I, yeah, because you asked me to do it today, and you'd already yeah, done it. I'd, I'd <laughs> clipped it and put it on Twitter, and I don't know how or when or any. Honestly, I was a mess. What a bozo! All right then, mate. Well, thank you very much. Uh, we'll be back on uh, Wednesday evening, I'm guessing, um, or maybe Thursday. Bars, we'll have a look because we can have a live watch along on Thursday um, and get the. Um, get some of the scores because we'll probably need to see some of these games before we handicap the weekend. Yeah. Next weekend starts on um, Saturday lunchtime. There's no Friday night game. So Thursday might be a good show. But anyway, look out for a schedule in the stream. Um, and as always, like we review, five star thumbs up, uh, be a friend, tell a friend, all of that bollocks. Uh, thanks everyone who joined us in the chat. Um, well done, Baz. You're an absolute martyr. Um, good luck this midweek. Uh, and we will see you down the road. Cheers. <laughs>